Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about the game of craps and analyze the house edge when betting on the pass line. Um, the house edge is defined by the expected loss when you bet a dollar. So let's first go over the rules of the craps game. But since it's quite a complicated game, we're going to talk about just the part where you bet a dollar on the pass line. So this part is the pass line. And uh, what we do is we start by putting a bet on the pass line, let's say a dollar. And we roll two dice. When the total of the two dice is 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, we establish a point and then we'll enter a second part of the game. In this second part of the game, what we are trying to do is we are going to aim to match the point that was established in the first round. When we initially roll the four, five, six, eight, nine, or ten, basically, we we still want to roll the same points again before rolling a seven. Then we will win the game. If a seven is rolled before the point is rolled, then we will lose the game. So, for example, if on the first roll we got a four then we will enter the point system. On the second row, we want to, we hope to roll a four again. If we roll a four, then we're gonna win a dollar. If we roll a seven, we're gonna lose a dollar. For everything else, we'll keep re-rolling. Let's draw this on a um, diagram. So let's go over the rules again. So we start off rolling the dice. So the first question is, is the total 7 or 11? If yes, we win a dollar. Well, if no, we check. Is the total 2, 3, or 12? If yes, we lose a dollar. For everything else, we establish a point. So the point could be equal to 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. One of this. And what we are going to do is we are going to roll the dice. Basically, we are going to keep rolling until a repeat of the point or a 7 is hit in which case if it's a repeat we win a dollar. If it's a seven, we lose a dollar. First of all, let's figure out what's the probability of getting a seven or eleven, because we know that if we hit those two, we in we win immediately. So, how many ways are there to get a seven? When we roll two dice, we can have one six. 2, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, 6, 1. 
6 ways of getting a 7. And what about getting an 11? It can be 5, 6, 6, 5. So totally, 8 out of 36 ways, we win a dollar. And what about losing a dollar? Well, we can roll a 2, which there's only one way. We can roll a 3, which is 1, 2, 2, 1. Or we can roll a 12, which is 6, 6. So in total, there are four ways of losing a dollar. So, so let's analyze the case where we roll a 4 first. So if we roll a 4, there's basically three ways of getting a 4. So that's on the first row. And what about the second row? On the second row, we are basically trying to see whether we are going to hit the 4 again or we are going to hit a 7. So to hit a 4, we know there are three ways. So three ways to hit 4. And for 7, we actually previously calculated up here. There are six ways to hit seven. After we hit the four on the first round, what's the probability that we're going to hit the four again before the seven? Since there are three ways of getting the four compared to six ways of getting a seven, the probability of hitting a four before a seven is actually three over nine. Okay, so what about if we get a 5? Well, to get a 5, there are 4 ways to get a 5. Sorry. And, and again, we are going to see if we can hit the 5 before hitting the 7, which there are always six ways to hit the seven. So then you have four ways divided by four plus six, which is four over 10. So we are kind of starting to see the pattern. Basically, you have the number of ways to hit the points divided by number of ways to hit the point plus 6 which is the number of ways to hit a 7 so so now let's just draw out the table of probability of winning a dollar let's list out all the different outcomes Total. Uh, let's call them dice total. We know it can be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And the probability of hitting the Actually, let's not use the probability. Let's use the number of ways to get such total. So for two, there's only one way, which is one, one. For three, there are two ways, which is one, two, and two, two, one, right? Basically, you can hit one, two, two, one. For four, you can kind of already see the pattern. For five, there'll be four ways, for six, for seven, six way, for eight, it'll be five, four, three, two, one. So it kind of goes from one to six, and then it goes back down to one when it hit 12. So to get the probability of each of dice total, 
is just the number of ways divided by 36. So basically 1 over 36, 2 over 36, 3 over 36, da, 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 da. And what is the return? The, how much money do you get back when you uh, bet a dollar? Well, if you hit 2, you basically don't get any money back. If you hit 3, you don't get any money back. If you hit 4, what? Uh, you actually need to do a second toss. And on your second toss, we already calculated in the earlier example that here basically when you when you hit a four, you have basically three over nine, which is governed by this formula. This is the odd or the probability that you are going to win on the point system. So basically, we are going to just apply the formula straight. Number of ways of hitting the point divided by number of ways of hitting the point plus 6. Where 6 is coming from the, the number of ways you can hit the 7. So basically, to hit a 4, your expected return is 3 divided by 3 plus 6. So to hit the 5, 4 divided by 4 plus 6. 5 divided by 5 plus 6. And then for 7, we actually know that we are going to always win. Let's use a different color. We're going to win a dollar. And then for 8, there's also 5 ways. So 5 divided by 5 plus 6. For 9, it will be 4 divided by 4 plus 6. For 10, it will be 3 divided by 4 plus 6. For 11, you're going to win a dollar because that's one of the rules. And for 12, we are going to lose the dollar. So we get back zero dollar. So now, if we take the sum product between the probability and the return, which is basically we multiply each one of this together, that would be the expected return of betting a dollar, right? So we don't have to look at the zero but we can calculate everything else. So when you hit a 4, your expected return is 3 over 36 times 3 over 3 plus 6. And then for 5, it's 4 over 36 times 4 over 4 plus 6. And then for 6, it's 5 over 36 times 5 over 5 plus 6 and we actually know that for 8, 9 and 10 they are actually repeating the exact same formulas again so we can actually times 2 and then we are going to add the probability of hitting the 7 which is 6 divided by 36 times one dollar and then plus the probability of hitting a eleven which is two times thirty six plus a dollar times a dollar. Actually I just realized I made a mistake because when we win we actually going to get back the winning amount which is actually two dollar as opposed to one dollar. We are going to have two dollar, two dollar, and then in this 
cases where we are in the point system, if we do win, we actually get $2 as opposed to $1. So which means we have to correct our formula by multiplying everything by 2. So this should be times 2, this should be times 2, this should be times 2. And the final answer is about 0.98596. For every dollar we put in, we're going to get back 0.98596. So if we take one dollar minus the expected return, that's the money that the house is expected to make, which is 0 0.01414. So about 1.414%. And this is what we call the house edge. Okay, thank you for watching.